Hi, it's Jason Perico for Bianchi Honda, introducing the 2016 Take Home a CRV event. Start by leasing America's best selling SUV, the 2016 Honda CRV LX All Wheel Drive, for only $279 a month for 36 months with no money down. That's right, no money down, only $279 a month. Only during the 2016 Take Home a CRV event here at Bianchi Honda. Bianchi Honda. Welcome back to the Sports Blitz, joined now by head coach of the Gannon Golden Knights, Brad Rizicki. Brad, uh, first and foremost, want to thank your team, Dan Teleski standing by. Uh, last week was kind of crazy. I like the story about you talking to your team before the game about James R. Uh, it won't be the same moving forward, but we're going to keep the interview. We're going to try to do things as normally as possible. But thanks uh, for everything last week. Yeah, that was a tough time for all of us, Alex. Uh, you know, it, you know I, I turned out a lot of different media uh, people that ask me a lot of questions just because you know Jimmy meant so much to me you know selfishly as much time as I spent with him and it was well beyond our radio shows the time we spent here together the, the amount of time we spent in the summer like I, I considered him a really really close friend I loved him just like about just a ton of people in here he have so this last week is you know it's been tough on all of us but you know selfishly I'm going to miss that relationship I love the guy to death and it's well beyond athletics. I mean, we talk so much about just politics and life and his kids and my kids and his dog. I don't I see Gypsy in here. And, you know, it's just so much more, man. I, I love the guy so much. I think the kids saw that I was hurting that week um, and telling them everything that happened with that situation was really, really tough because it happened last Thursday. He's a legend. I appreciate you taking over this show. Um, but I'm, I'm going to miss Jimmy so much. I mean, the guy meant so much to me and I can't say enough. You know, and there's not words that can put in what he meant and my, our relationship meant in this world so with that being said moving forward i know he'd be proud of you've taken over the show hey gotta do it gotta do it i would know he ex he would expect me to do it so we're here uh and he loved the job you were doing this year so let's get to the game it was seton hill it was a much needed victory but it opened up in a familiar way long opening drive the other team scored i know you've been focusing on that uh, throughout the past few weeks at least. So what are you doing to try to get your team ready out of the gate? There were multiple goals. that we, we, we list three goals a game going into it, but the third goal was win the first half and not even worry about the second half because we've always shown up then. Yeah. Um, sometimes the game speed affects us, uh, but we really focused and concentrated on winning that first half. Um, so when it actually was 10-6 and, and they were driving, uh, when we stopped them, you know, we, we forced a fumble and we picked it up. But even if we got them to kick a field goal at that point in time, I was going to tell Coach Hoy to take a knee. So we went in at halftime with the lead instead of trying to stretch that thing out. Um, it was important for us to win the first half. When you're dealing with inexperience at times and you're going through practice, the game speed catches up with you, and we still haven't caught up to what it's like actually getting the game started off. And as the game has gone on on both sides of the ball, we've been more successful. But that's just a, a learning curve that this young team, inexperienced team, needs to learn. And, you know, it's, it's caught us in a few games where we've gotten too far behind in the first half. You know, to be honest with you, Alex, the only game that we were really out of from a from a score standpoint was the Edinburgh game and we just flat out didn't show up I and mean, we were flat that game but it's been a learning experience for these kids so <clears throat> that was a big emphasis against a really good football team I, th I think Seton Hill is one of the better clubs that we're going to play all year and plus it helped that we were on fall break you know I got the kids you know our, our allotment during the during the day which I can't always do because the class schedule conflicts that happen with practice kids are going in and out but to get a full day's practice on Wednesday and Thursday was vital with these kids they were prepared for the game and I think that helped them out a ton on Saturday. How about the practice week for Nathan Adams uh, since has been named ECAC player of the week but you mentioned the stop it was you were down 10 up 10-3 in the second quarter ball in the 26th and he had the sack and forced a fumble. Yeah Nate Adams has played well all year and he he flashes game day because in practice he's he's a really good job he does a really good job from a preparation standpoint and have, holding all the rest of everyone on defense accountable for their prep going into the week because he's done it. He's a transfer from Eastern Michigan and got some, some really good reps and some starts up there. Um, but the kid prepares unbelievable, and he, he understands what people are trying to do to our defense and our 3-3 three, three, um, stack. So he, the, I can't say enough about the kid's leadership skills being here for one year, but his preparations made him a really good ball player for us. So to you, this isn't a breakout game. I mean, the stat line, it looked 
better than normal, but to you, you're not surprised by his play. No, no, I, not, he, you know, we were, he was getting pretty fa fast to the gaps for what they do. And, uh, you know, he, he made some tackles in the backfield and had some tackles for a loss, but no, he was key. And he plays with a ton of emotion. You know, that's the thing about the kid is we can put a ton of schemes out there and show them where they need to be. But if you don't play with passion, you know, is it going to work out? And he plays with a ton of passion and it bleeds through the rest of our defense. Uh, another guy we've been touching on in recent weeks and had a great game this past one, Karch Holland. Not only was he kicking field goals, he, I believe, had a strip. Didn't he strip? Yeah. Fumble? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a kicker on a scholarship out there. Yeah, right? we, uh, sometimes we go in the game and you don't notice who it was. And I had to ask the guys, who went down there and <laughs> filled into the, uh, the lane? And they're like, Coach, that's Karch. And, you know, Karch is, he's mentally tough. You know, he, you can hear him grunting when he, he's kicking off. And he, he had, Everybody had a lot of passion on Saturday. They knew how important that game was to get us back on the, on the winning side of it. And Karch went down there, made a play, forced a fumble, and uh, was actually in on the tackle. Now I have to pull Karch aside and say, look, you've got to be smarter than that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the kid's out there playing the game as hard as he can. And then, he, you know, confidence-wise, he knocked down some pretty important field goals for us yeah. during the course of the day, which got him back on you know, in the side that we want him to where he's making, making field goals in some tough situations. So, yeah, I was happy about Karch. Uh, defense, special teams will wrap up the first half, but I thought that both of those things were very much needed in the first half. They kept it close, uh, and then we'll get into the second half. But talk about your special teams, especially in the first. Yeah, and, uh, and every single special team we had, even if you look at the punt, we, we really pinned those guys back. You know, we were averaging 42 yards a punt. And, we do a variety of different things with our punt game um, week to week just to try to change it up. We got two different punters, Aaron Schiffler and Jared Morrison, to do a great job for us because one's lefty and one's righty if we want a rugby, and sometimes we sit back in the base and kick it. But field position is vital because there's not a ton of teams that can drive the length of the field on us without big playing us to score. Um, beyond that, you know, catching the balls on the punt return has been an Achilles heel for us. Nico Law went back there and caught him. But our kickoff team is one of the best in the country, and Coach Wolf does a great job with those guys of pinning them back and keeping everybody inside the 25. And again, Creating, creating field positions. So special teams were vital all day. We did a great job with that part of it, and I was really proud of those guys. And we spend a lot of time with our special teams during the course of the week. And that showed, especially this weekend. Dorian Jones then took the four-point lead into halftime. What was the feeling in the locker room? Obviously, the team no stranger to going out and knowing that the job to be done is in the second half. Yeah, Dorian made a big play with the interception right before halftime. It was a really athletic play, and he, didn't, he doesn't get a ton of time at corner because he's our backup free safety. So we've kind of moved him around. He's a, he's a fill-in guy, him and Martel Davis, when we have injuries. Um, Dorian went out there and flashed on, on Saturday, so we were really proud of the way he played and the play he made before halftime. And then coming back out in the second half, we've always been a second-half team to this point in time. Um, we made the proper adjustments. You know, Coach Hoy, Coach Thompson do a great job with that at halftime and see how people are attacking us. Offense methodically moved the ball, created first downs, which we haven't done. We were very efficient on first down. We were getting our four yards plus. Uh, Zach Phillips, I think, was 11 for 15 the first half for 150 yards, which is, is vital for our success because that opened up the run game, and we were able to get Tyler Johnson going, Marcus Jones. Isaiah Young went and played slot receiver for us because of injuries, and he's a tailback. He flashed on Saturday, and he forced our hand to be able to keep him on the field. So we're really proud of him. We moved Nico Law over to X receiver. So we had some injuries that actually created some explosive players on the field that helps us, helped us on Saturday. And when they got it figured out because they moved around, um, they really flashed on Saturday, controlled the football, controlled the clock, got first down, scored points when we needed them. We held them up on defense. So, yeah, it was a great second half for us. Yeah, anybody that carried the ball, it seemed, got four yards per, per carry. So you'll take that. Uh, and then the other thing, these guys must have fun in practice with their play fakes because it's improved throughout the year. Um, but I've, I'm listening to Jack Quinn, and they're fooling him on the call. I mean, these guys, they make it look good. Yeah, you know, that, that goes with the, the experience that Zach Phillips is getting. You know, he, he's, he's able to put it in the belly and pull it out. But there's, you know, you, there's a cohesiveness with the running backs and the quarterback when you're a read team from that standpoint. But even our play actions and our bootlegs and, and finding Will Davis or our crossing routes and, and quad law out there, they did a great job with hiding the ball and keeping those guys moving because Seton Hill's big up front. I mean, they have three technique that I think is a really good one in the PSAC, and they're athletic. I mean, they, they run. So we kept those guys on their heels. Um, but it, being efficient, throwing the football, created a box that we could handle, and that's when in the second half we were getting four-plus on every run play. All right, so this weekend, Saturday at 3, and it is their homecoming, number 8 Cal. Uh, things aren't exactly normal down there. you got the strike going on, but the game goes on as planned. So how are you preparing for Cal? 
Yeah, you know, the, the strength I really never paid attention to because we can only control what we can con control, and, and they've got everything handled for what I understand down there, but we, I haven't really even talked with our kids about it. I just said we're going to play Cal. Don't listen to everything else that's going on from that standpoint. Um, but they're a really good football team. They're ranked in the top ten for a reason. Some polls have them like five or four. I think you said eight. Um, they're good. I mean, they got some seniors and juniors out there that are really, really good playmakers. They're wide out that they have. Um, Gary Brown's been a pain, a thorn in our side for a long time. He's a good one, so we're going to have to have some things where we double him up and, and handle him. Uh, I think the quarterback's playing really well. Their offensive line's cohesive. Their tailback, who was hurt last year, I think is a really good one. Um, so they're very, very efficient with their offense. And defensively, they're a 3-4, which you don't see much anymore. You know, you see, you see some 3-3 three, three stack with us and Mercierist, and then normally it's a four-man front. So they bring pressure in a variety of different places, and it's really affected people. I think they game plan really well. So their coaches do a great job of watching film and attacking people within the framework of their scheme that makes sense. And uh, it's hard to, to get yards and, and score points, so we're going to have to be really efficient on offense on Saturday. Uh, the one guy that jumped out to me, Grissom, he's still there, right? Running back? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. That's that's the kid that got hurt last year, and okay. now is back. Is that he'll? I think he's going to be a redshirt junior now. But yeah, he's a good one, and you're going to we're going to tackle. Fifty against somebody the other day. Yeah, day. yeah. If you if you don't bottle him up or have people you know in the box to be able to handle him, he he'll get he'll get through, and uh, he's got the ability to run away from people too. So he's you know 24. He's a really good one. All right, playing homecoming spoiler in Cal this weekend. Head coach Brad Rizicki of the Gannon Golden Knights. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it.